Dear friends, we continue our reading classes. Today we will read the beginning of the novel by American writer John Grisham, A Painted House, inspired by writer's childhood in Arkansas. Set in September of 1952, this story is told through the eyes of seven-year-old boy, the youngest in a family of cotton farmers struggling to harvest their crop and earn enough money. The story is narrated by our friend William Thompson. A Painted House by John Grisham Chapter 1 The hill people and the Mexicans arrived on the same day. It was a Wednesday, early in September 1952. The Cardinals were five games behind the Dodgers with three weeks to go and the season looked hopeless. The cotton, however, was waist high to my father, over my head, and he and my grandfather could be heard before supper whispering words that were seldom heard. It could be a good crop. They were farmers, hard-working men, who embraced pessimism only when discussing the weather and crops. There was too much sun, or too much rain, or the threat of floods in the lowlands, or the rising prices of seed and fertilizer, or the uncertainties of the market. On the most perfect of days, my mother would quietly say to me, Don't worry, the men will find something to worry about. Pappy, my grandfather, was worried about the price for labor when we were searching for hill people. They were paid for every hundred pounds of cotton they picked. The previous year, according to him, it was a dollar fifty per hundred. He'd already heard rumors that a farmer over in Lake City was offering a dollar sixty. This played heavily on his mind as we rode to town. He never talked when he drove, and this was because, according to my mother, not much of a driver herself, he was afraid of motorized vehicles. His truck was a 1939 Ford, and with the exception of our old John Deere tractor, it was our sole means of transportation. This was no particular problem except when we drove to church, and my mother and grandmother were forced to sit snugly together up front in their Sunday best, while my father and I rode in the back engulfed in dust. Modern sedans were scare, scarce in rural Arkansas. Pappy drove 37 miles per hour. His theory was that every automobile had a speed at which it ran most efficiently, and though through some vaguely defined method, he had determined that his old truck should go 37. My mother said to me that it was ridiculous. She also said he and my father had once fought over whether the truck should go faster. But my father rarely drove it, and if it, I happened to be riding with him, he would level off at 37 out of respect for Pappy. My mother said she suspected he drove much faster when he was alone. We turned on the Highway 135, and as always, I watched Pappy, Pappy carefully shift the gears, pressing slowly on the clutch, delicately prodding the stick shift on the steering column until the truck reached its perfect speed. Then I leaned over to check the speedometer, 37. He smiled at me as if we both agreed that the truck belonged at this speed. Highway 135 ran straight and flat through the farm country of the Arkansas Delta. On both sides, as far as I could see, the fields were white with cotton. It was time for harvest, a wonderful season for me because they turned out school for two months. For my grandfather, though, it was a time of endless worry. 
If you wish to learn about the adventures of this 7-year-old boy and the secret he kept, visit our book collection at Window and America Center in Chezhevsky Library. There you may also find other novels by John Grisham, especially his popular legal thrillers. You are welcome!